Welcome to another edition of Mark's Inspiration. Glad you could join me today. Subscribe, smash that like button before we get started. And today's topic is going to be, what is it going to be? Today's topic is going to be consciousness. You create your reality. I was watching a thing last night. <clears throat> now, sometimes some of you may wonder why I talk about that. And you're thinking, oh, I want to hear about how to pick up girls, how to have a relationship, how to do game with girls. It's all relevant. It all works together. Here's the deal. If you don't have the consciousness of a man who can have any woman he wants and a man who all men want to be like, guess what? You're going to be piss poor at game. You're going to be piss poor at picking up girls. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you have got to believe, you have got to have the consciousness, you have got to rise in consciousness to a man, yes, who believes in himself, who is sure of himself, who is confident of himself. Because until you have that, you're not going to accomplish anything of worth. You may pick up a hot girl, you may, be, <laughs> you may be able to date her for a while, but eventually she's going to see through the facade you put up or the game or the technique you use to pick her up. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to get your feelings hurt. You're going to get depressed. You're going to feel down. You're going to feel like nothing ever works out for you. Well, it's because you pick this girl up by using outer techniques and methods. You weren't the kind of person that these methods and techniques portrayed. So she will see through that sooner or later, usually sooner than later. Better for you sooner because the longer you're with her, if she's hot and somebody you really enjoy being with, she is going to see through that. It may take a little time and guess what? You're both going to be disappointed. Both of you. She is too because she's going to think, man, I thought this guy really had it together. I thought he knew. I thought he understood. A woman wants a man who gets it. She don't want to teach you how to get it or what's going on or how to manage or how to control frame with her. And sometimes even the most seemingly powerful women are, they put up this facade of strength and they will knock guys down and cut them in half want a powerful man, a man that can put them in their place, a man that can control frame, a man that tells them, hey, I'll pick you up at six. <clears throat> I'll pick you up at six. We're going to dinner at, uh, what is this place I had here? Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> Somebody gave me some coupons for Texas Roadhouse, a, a client of mine. So she doesn't want a man that says that. And she says, well, honey, I want to go to Burger King. Oh, okay. Well, we can go to Burger King. There you go, strike one right there. You got what, two more strikes and you're out of there. You've got to have the consciousness of a confident person. You have got to control frame. All these things come from within. So you may be asking me, okay, Mark, I get it. How do you have that type of consciousness? Well, like Rich Cooper says, you got to do the work. Watch him, Entrepreneurs in Cars. He's also got a book out called um, Unplugged Alpha, I think it's the kind. Of, I'm reading it, but I can't remember right offhand what the title is. But it's a good book. You need to know the game. You need to know the dynamics between men and women. You have to understand something before you can, how do I say, learn how to deal with it or how to uh, cooperate with it. You have to understand women. But more important than that, you have to understand yourself. And that goes back to doing the work. Work on yourself. And you may ask, how do I work on myself? Well, one thing you can do is sit down and write down an inventory. Write down everything that's inside of you. Write down all the resentments of the people you're angry at, uh, the people that you feel good about, things that have happened to you. Write all that down in a form like uh, bullet points. One, two, three. For example, I resent all these people, write them down. Why do you resent them? Usually it's because they didn't do what you wanted them to. You have to look at yourself, write down the liabilities, which are resentments, they eat you up inside, they don't hurt the other person. 
and the assets, the things that you like about yourself and about other people, because people reflect back to you who and what you are. For example, if I go out today and someone treats me badly, I have to look within myself and say, how did I bring that on? What am I projecting that this person thinks that uh, it's okay to treat me like that? What, what brought that into my life? No one can treat you in a way unless you have first treated yourself that way. What I mean by that is if you really love yourself, guess what? People will love you. Okay, if you really love yourself on a subconscious level, okay? If you don't like yourself, people will treat you badly. They won't like you either. That's just the way life works. You will run into one once in a while who will love you until you learn how to love yourself. I met people like that years ago. I didn't realize I didn't love myself, but that was the case. If you treat yourself badly or you talk badly about yourself or to yourself, if you tell yourself you're stupid when you make a mistake, or I can never do that, or I'm always making the same stupid mistake, or I don't even like to say it as an example, because your subconscious mind does not differentiate between what is true and what is false. It just accepts it. So very important what you say to yourself, okay? You have to be willing to work on yourself. You have to concentrate on you, fix you. Well, I don't wanna say fix because that implies that you are broken and you are not. You are exactly where you're supposed to be at this moment. Perfect. Ah, and you say, oh, Mark, you don't know how many mistakes I make. I can't even get out from behind the computer. Uh, I play Xbox all day. I don't have a social life. I don't do anything. Well, guess what? That's exactly how you're supposed to be today. Now, you can change that and become more. I don't want to say become better because that implies that you're not good enough. You are good enough right now. You are just not expressing the goodness and the greatness you have within yourself because you don't believe it. So going back to this list of all the good things and the bad things that you have inside of you, all those things affect you and affect your ability to take action and affect your ability to express yourself, to express the infinite, wonderful person that you really are. And you are, you are that. Now your conception of yourself may not be that, but that's what you are inherently. That is the base of who you are. And it's up to you to express that, to express the desires you have within your heart. Only you can do it. No one can force you. That is your free will. That is your choice. Now, you're watching this because you want something different. You want to be more. You want to express more. I can't do your push-ups for you. I can help you get there. That's all I can do. If you are willing, it's your choice to follow my um, suggestions or not. So you've got everything written down on paper. You need to take a look at that. You need to be scrupulously, rigorously honest with yourself. That's difficult to do. Write all that down and take a look at it. Now you say, well, Mark, I, got, I have all that in my head. No, um, oh, I forgot to mention, got the D-man here. Someone got on me about that the other day because I didn't announce that when I first started my video. So anyway, here I am. Okay, so you have to be honest with yourself. And then when you look at that on paper, it's different having it on paper because when you put it on paper, it becomes real. When it's in your head, it's, it's like a fantasy. It's not, it doesn't really seem as real because you haven't taken action. Every vision you have in your mind comes to pass because that vision creates a, dis, a motivation for intuitive action. You'll get intuitive ideas to take action. Now, if you rationalize them away, you won't take action. You will not, you will not achieve your desires. You have to follow the higher self, the big eye, God, whatever that means to you. That speaks to you in little nudges, intuitive nudges, intuition, and you have to learn to listen to it. But it's difficult to listen to it if you have all this garbage that you've written down on paper inside of you. The garbage is what blocks off this flow of that power. So you write all that down on the paper, okay? You get all that down, you take a look at it. And you look at these things and you think about them. Why are they there? What have you been doing with them? How do you feel about them? After you get all that written down and you've admitted that to yourself that you have these character flaws, defects, whatever you want to call them, you find someone you can trust and you want to put everything down on there. I mean, put down everything on there, your secrets, things you want to take to your grave, 
all these things, these fears inside of you, all these things, everything, you've got to take inventory. Every business takes, a, every good successful business have an invent, has an inventory of the stock in trade. And this is what you are doing. After you get that all down on paper and you look at it, you go over it yourself, then you sit down with someone else that you trust, that you know is not going to tell anyone, and you speak to them about it, okay? This humbles you. This knocks that pride out. It takes that fear away because these things are blocking you off from the power to achieve what you desire, whether, whether it be a perfect relationship, whether it be you want to date many girls, whether you want to become extremely successful in business, whatever it is, these things stop you, okay? You have to get them out. At least let one other person in the world know everything about you, every dark cranny of the past. This is very important. This principle is as old as humanity itself, since men could talk. Okay, you can look back into the great religions and they practice this. It's a form of confession, okay? But we won't look at it as a religious practice, but this is nothing new, okay? And you haven't done anything that hasn't been done thousands, maybe millions of times before you were born, okay? So it's okay. You just need to share that with someone because as long as you hold that inside and you're the only one that knows it, it has power over you. When you share it, it dissipates this power. These are not easy practices, but you want to be the man you came here to be? These are the things you must do to express yourself fully, to have fulfillment, to have contentment, to have wealth. And wealth means well-being as well as many other things. You can have all the money in the world and not have wealth. How can that be, you ask me? Because wealth, the word wealth, comes from wheel, which means well-being. It's an old Anglo-Saxon word. Now people think of wealth as just money. Money is not true wealth. It's a form of wealth, but there are many aspects of wealth. Okay? So that's where we're going to stop today. Try that. Contempt before investigation will keep you in everlasting ignorance. Herbert Spencer, he said that. Very good. If you don't want to try something or if you think there's no way it could work before you ever try it, then you're in contempt and that will keep you ignorant. But I know you're not ignorant or you wouldn't be listening to me, all right? Thanks for joining me. If you would like to get my help personally, you can contact me by message, leave a comment, direct message on Instagram or Mark's Inspirational Guidance at gmail.com. Have a great day.